second class. This is the last set of videos I'm going to make for you guys because the semester ends next week. Um, I'm really excited about it. You all have been doing really great since we transitioned online. So I'm sure this final exam will be a piece of cake. So without further ado, our final exam review. So problem one. In a survey of 3,005 adults aged 57 through 85 years, it was found that 82% of them used at least one prescription medication. The margin of error is one percentage point. <clears throat> we need to identify this population. That means who are we studying? So our population is adults aged 57 through 85 years. It's not our, our population is not the 3,005 of them, right? That's our sample out of the larger population. Is this experiment, is this study an experiment or an observational study? Well, we're asking them if they've used prescription medication. We aren't giving them prescription medication. So this is observational. Next, what's our variable of interest? Well, our variable of interest is whether they use prescription medication or not. That's what we're asking them about. <clears throat> For part D, it asks, is the reported value of 82% a population parameter or a sample statistic? Well, we got this 82% from our sample, so it is gonna be a sample statistic. Remember, we could use um, our margin of error, right, um, to define a range for the population parameter. Now, the last part, E, multiple answers will be accepted. I just need you to tell me in what way you could take a simple random sample for this data. So you could take a cluster sample. You could take a stratified sample. You probably wouldn't want to take a convenience sample where you're standing outside of Walgreens, right? Because those are people who are picking up medications, or a lot of them are, you know? So keep that in mind as you tell me what way you'd want to take your simple random sample. For problem two, in a survey of 4,000 American adults, they were asked if they thought their diet affected their blood pressure. 50% of them answered yes. So if I want to know the number of respondents who answered yes, out of the 400, I'm going to take 0.56, which is the proportion who said yes, times 4,000. That gives me 2,240. Now, if 48% of respondents said they were not sure, what is the percentage of not sure responses? So I had 48 out of my, pop, my sample size, which is 400. That gives me 0 0.012 or 1.2%. So, Given that the possible responses are yes, no, or not sure, what is the data level? Is it qualitative or quantitative? Remember, quantitative data has to do with numbers like years, temperatures, weights, heights. So this is definitely going to be qualitative. Qualitative data has two levels of measurements, nominal and ordinal. Nominal means we're putting them into categories, right, like colors. Ordinal is a rating scale, okay? Like one star, two stars, good, better, best. So this data is going to be nominal. Friendly reminder that interval data is stuff like years or temperature, right? And ratio data, that's going to be stuff that has like a starting point, like weight and height. And you can create a ratio and compare that data. <clears throat> For problem three, the following data gives the length of Super Bowl ads in seconds. And I want us to find the mean, median, and range for our data set. So for part A, 
I want to find my mean. Remember, our mean is also called the average. It's the sum of all of our values divided by how many values I have. So I'm going to take 28 plus 36 plus 50 plus 33 plus 30 plus 40 plus 38 plus 26 plus 68, woo, divided by the number of Super Bowl ads I have, which is 9. That's going to give me 38.77. So the average length of a Super Bowl ad from our sample set is 38.77. I also want to find my median. Now remember my median is the middle value. So in order to find the middle value, I need to write these in order from smallest to largest. So I have 26, 28, 30, 33, 36, 38, 40, 50, 68. And I got all my values accounted for. So I have to pick my middle value since this is an odd number data set. Nine is gonna have the fifth piece of data be the middle, right? This is my middle. I've got, it's the piece of data that divides my data set in half, right? It's also called Q2. Friendly reminder, we're gonna need that later. So my median is 36. Now I wanna determine my mode. Actually, I didn't ask you for a mode, but we're gonna find the mode anyway. So remember, the mode is the data value that occurs the most. All of these data values occur only once. So there is no mode. And I want you to tell me the range. So the range is <clears throat> that's gonna be 68. So it's our maximum minus our minimum. And that gives me 42. For part B, I want us to go ahead and give me a five number summary and draw a box plot. So the five number summary is min, Q1, Q2, Q3, and max. So I know my maximum is 68, my minimum is 26, my Q2 is 36. Cool. Now I need to figure out Q1 and Q3. So Q1 and Q3 mark the 25th percentile and the 27th percentile, respectively. So I need to find the middle of each of these data points, these four groups of state, of these sets of four data. I want to find the median for the lower half and the median for the upper half. So I have to take 28 plus 30 divided by 2. That gives me 29. That's my Q1. And I have to take 40 plus 50 divided by 2. That gives me 45. That's my Q3. So now I'm ready to draw my box plot. The most important part about drawing a box plot is you have to have a number line. You have to have a number line. You have to have a point of reference for our data values. So I'm going to have 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. That looks like a pretty good number line. Okay, so I'm going to plot my minimum, which is 26, my Q1, which is 29, in order to make my box plot using my five number summary. Q2 is 36, Q3 is 45, and then my maximum is 68. So there we have my beautiful box plot, which represents my five number summary. So make sure you list your five number summary and draw a box plot with a number line. For part C, I want you to apply the rule of thumb and estimate the standard deviation. So remember that our estimate for our standard deviation is range divided by four. So I'm gonna take my range, which I found to be 42, I'm going to divide that by 4, and I get 10.5. Next, pulse rates in adult females are normally distributed with a mean of 74 beats per minute 
and a standard deviation of 12.5 beats per minute. So I wanna know what percent of women have a pulse rate less than 89? So let's go ahead and take a look. I have my normal distribution. I have a mean of 74 and I have a pulse rate of 89. And I wanna know what percent of the population have a pulse rate less than 89. So I wanna know this area over here. I can do that by calculating a z-score. Remember that z-scores tell us the area to the left. So I'm gonna take my z-score to be my sample mean minus my population mean over my standard deviation. That gives me 89 minus 74 over 12.5, and that gives me 1.2. Now 1.2 is not the area under our curve right here, right? The area under a normal curve always adds up to one. I have to take this to a Z table and I find a Z table value of 0.8849. So that means that 88.49% of women have an average pulse rate less than 89. Let's put that We've got 88.49%. Next, I wanna know what percentage of adults have a pulse rate greater than 68? So here we have our normal curve. We've got 74, which is 68, but I wanna know what percentage of women have a pulse rate greater than 68. So I'm gonna be finding this area of my curve. Remember that what I look up in the Z table is gonna give me the area to the left of 68. So I'm gonna to have to subtract my area from one. Let's go ahead and solve this. I have my sample mean minus my population mean over standard deviation. I get 68 minus 74 over 12.5, which gives me negative 0.48. If I look this up in a Z table, I find an area of 0.3156. That's the area over here. But I don't care about that area. I want to know this area. So I'm going to take, no. So I have to take 1 minus 0.3156. Sorry, everything got erased, guys. But that gives me 0.6844. That's our area to the right of 68. 0.6844. So my answer is going to be 68.44%. Now for part C, the final part of this question is if I surveyed 64 females, um, how likely is it that their mean pulse rate is greater than 74.3? So they gave us something different here. They gave us a sample size. That means I'm gonna to have to use the equation for standard distribution of means. Let's take a look at what that is. <clears throat> so my sample size is 64. Our sample mean is 70, our population mean is 74. My sample mean is 74.3. And I wanna know if I have a sample size of 64 women, what is the probability of, if I took a sample, the mean pulse being 74.3 or greater? So it's gonna be this area over here. So again, I am gonna to have to subtract from one because the Z table is gonna give me the area over here. So let's go ahead and calculate our Z score using the standard distribution for sample means. So I have Z equals X bar minus mu over the standard deviation, but something's different. Because I'm given my sample size, I put this over the square root of N. That means I have 74.3 minus 74 over my standard deviation, which is 12.5. 
over the square root of 64. That means I get a z score of 0.192, but I'm not done. I have to look this up in a z table. If I go to 0.192 in a z table, I find a z table value of 0.5753. That's the area to the left of 74.3 in this distribution of means. So I have to take 1 minus 0.5753. That gives me 0.4257, which is 42.57%. So the probability, if I took a sample of size 64, that their mean would be greater than, this is our sample mean, sorry guys, that our mean would be greater than 74.3 is 42 0.57%.